and welcome to my new episode of this new health and wellness series being featured on the Norfolk Community Television Station. On each episode, I will bring on thought-provoking guests in the local community who are elevating the lives of those around them through their work and practice. Today, I am happy to bring on Jimmy Perkins, who is a trailblazer in the local community, and he preaches the development of the mind, body, spirit, and how paramount this is to our personal development. His, his brand, Through Eye Tiger, and his philosophy is to enhance the connection with ourselves, each other, and the earth. Through the emerging of Eastern spirituality and Western health sciences, Through Eye Tiger concepts take self-care to the next level by expanding individual awareness of what it truly takes to internally create happiness, healthy, holy, mind, body, and spirit. Recently, he has teamed up with Gopal Farms and Forest Hill Mass who practice regenerative agriculture, and it's an exciting and ancient form of agriculture, which has proven to optimize our bodies in ways we have not been exposed to much here in the Western world. And personally, Jimmy, I just want to thank you so much for coming on because I think what you're doing is ahead of the game, and it's, it's just it's amazing. It's a wholesome approach to health and wellness, so thank you, Jimmy. Absolutely. Thank you for having me because uh, the goal here is to express this and get the message out so that we can help more and more people align with themselves and, and build a healthy, happy, and holy lifestyle. Perfect. Spot on. So, Jimmy, I want to start with your trans transformative fitness model and how it reflects this wholesome approach to our health and wellness because it's very unique, but it's very advanced at the same time. So, just dive into that and tell people yeah, so what it's all about. That. It's a pretty broad topic and there's a lot to it. And it's, uh, it's actually at a time right now where it's, tra it's changing in our favor more and more. It's, uh, it's fantastic in the past few years what we've been able to scientifically monitor, prove. People like Joe Dispenza and um, a lot of these Eastern methods that have been proven to help. And previously, because of the inability to prove what they're doing in the material sciences, they've been either demonized or not utilized. And so um, there's a huge gap in the way we approach our health and wellness. And a lot of it has to do with our lifestyle. So uh, a lot of coaches like myself right now uh, are tying it all together by calling it transformational fitness because it's essentially the merging of Eastern and Western methods, Western health sciences, Eastern spirituality, breathing, yoga, um, mm -hmm. ancient knowledge, uh, Ayurvedic type knowledge, thousands of years worth of scriptures. So the merging of these two things allows us to see more of a wholesome approach and a, not as much of a linear approach to the way we approach health and wellness. And so with the transformational, the spiritual realm, the non-physical realm, which is foundational to what we see on the surface and our results is now being more acknowledged. And previously, without being able to monitor and test that, it was disregarded. So what I mean by that is diving into that spiritual realm, that non-physical phenomena, and dissecting uh, why it is that we see the results we do is crucial, is crucial to our results and to what we're able to produce. In the material sciences, they're fantastic. The Western medicine is a great thing, but it's also missing a lot, and it's very limited in what it's able to do. And so with transformational fitness, we're trying to bring it all together and really troubleshoot to essentially create a new lifestyle approach to health and wellness, a prehab approach, which is what desperately needs to happen. Uh, the, the Western world's very into quick fixes, uh, masking issues, and obviously money making that derails the, um, the, the intent or, or the product of how we're going to help people in, in, in the uh, efficiency and our ability to do so. So it's up to people like us to express these messages, to circulate information, and um, try to put together uh, a, a new perception and perspective on what it really takes to internally create a happy, healthy, holy mind, body, and spirit, which I emphasize internally because that's probably one of the main points in adding the, the Eastern realm is there's a lot more to it than we think we know and the arrogance of Western civilization seems to think otherwise, but there's a whole lot more to it. Mm. And that to me is because we're not developing ourselves as much internally, even the way we approach fitness and physical therapy is very surface level is very external. It's not as emotion based. It's not as computer based the brain, you know what I mean? So mm. there's a lot missing in it. And uh, in this time, science is now catching up to spirituality 
which is uh, a beautiful thing. And it's open. It's 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 redeveloping the way we see healthcare. Mm-hmm. It's it's truly amazing stuff, and that's why it, it's so transformative. Because, like you said, we we've been focusing so much on just like the physical body and not about the mind and the spirit. So, so what happens for you personally, speaking from your personal standpoint? What happens to our our being, our our life force, when we implement this stuff in our daily lives? And what are the kind of things you do, like? in the transformable fitness model, like yoga combining with like water training and, and reflexology, like all that stuff. Yeah. And so that's just those ways. But if you're looking at it, a full lifestyle approach, it's not just that by dissecting who you are, what you're meant to mm. be, your purpose, your alignment in this world. And that is health. That's fitness. Mm. This is what people don't realize. And they break themselves down, getting caught up in that material external influence of their life. And so that that's the foundation of all of it. And then the other material stuff that you kind of just listed the physical therapy, the yoga and meditation, which is fantastic um, is really what enables and empowers and activates you Mm. in the areas of your mind and body, your psychology and your physiology to be able to produce and empower you to create a life that you align with and to create a healthy lifestyle that makes sense for you. And if you don't dissect it on that non-physical and spiritual realm, you can do all the material surface level stuff you want, but you might be missing the key components of what's actually holding back your growth. Mm. So, um, what is, what did, uh, on your personal journey, I know it's a long story, but what was holding you back? Cause you've always been, a, you've always been a very, like a fitness guru and stuff like that. What held you back maybe on the spiritual side of things emotionally? Lack of expression, Lack of expression right? So I, was closed hearted, right? Mm -hmm. Now your sacral chakra is really about your expression, but your chakras obviously work hand in hand with each other and restricting one is probably going to affect another in a certain way. But I was closed hearted uh, a lot of my life. And so I, I was very sacrificial and I, um, I, I, you know, allowed myself to be taken advantage of or used or um, I closed my heart to the truth in many situations. And I told myself it was for the greater good, but it was just ignorance, arrogance, and ego. Hmm. And so that was my, it was the same thing, ego. Uh, especially, I would say a lot of male figures in our culture get um, uh, culturally conditioned to view life through this perspective. And we end up that grind lifestyle where we, um, it's a linear, linear style of thinking of, of how we should live and we're less vulnerable. And like I said, that, that basically when you use certain parts of your mind and body, yeah. you're able to use those parts of your mind and body. So they get practice. They, right. If you sit around all day, your quads and glutes aren't going to fire too well. Fact. If you don't use these areas of your brain, such as vulnerability, expression, love, yin, a lot of the things that are hard in our masculine state. Um, when you don't activate those areas of your mind, they somewhat go dormant and, and that reflects in your body. Your mind and body are one. So areas of your body will tense up and hence the close heartedness. I see a lot in physically and people, I, I, you know, I see postural issues that end up with close heartedness and I'm like, ah, oh. so there's a direct physical way we can tap into the mind and activate these areas of um, our yin side if it's needed. So mm-hmm. creating that balance in your mind and body enables and empowers you to build this lifestyle now, um, you said, how does it affect me and how has it affected me personally? Mm. Truly, it's amazing. And it's, I really think it's not fully explainable. And mm. that's one of the main issues. Everybody wants an answer. And that's what Western medicine will deliver to you, an answer. This is it. This is your problem. Here's your solution. Have a nice day. I don't think so. That's not how it works. It just isn't. Everything's more complex than we know. And we're arrogant to think that we are in control and that we know. Now we have a lot of tools and a lot of things that we can utilize. And essentially the, the deeper we go into ourselves, the more we're able to find what's going to help us. But mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to explain what it all does to you, but it's definitely a nervous system and a transformational effect that if you can activate and balance your mind and body and get these areas of your, mm-hmm. of your mind and body firing to enable a deeper conscious perspective and the way you approach your life, it's going to help you on the surface in in all the issues that you face. So without that acknowledgement of the deep foundation, you're uh, blinded. Mm. 
you're doing yourself a disservice. And we don't, we don't dissect this at all, especially with our educational systems. It just doesn't happen. So I, that's why I think it's so important to install these concepts that the priority in life, no matter what your goal may be, should be the development of your mind, body, and spirit. And then everything else material should be second. I think we should install mm. the principles and these concepts, especially a yogic perspective before the ages of seven which we don't do. We actually do the complete opposite right now. And it shows, it shows. Well, because this stuff is, it's, it's so valuable. And it's almost like if we, like you said, if we implement this stuff at a young age, um, it's not like indoctrination or anything. This stuff is just so true and it's backed by science and it, it's, it's truly transformative. And I think, I love your point about self-expression. You know, people like Bruce Lee and even Kobe Bryant, I've talked about it a lot, just activating yourself. And once you act health, yeah, that's an area of health that allows you to align with your life. If you're going to suppress that, let's say you're not activated in that sense. Well, you're going to struggle in areas of your life where you have potential that you know you could. You're going to feel that you're not good enough. You're going to feel that, you know, mm. stuff like that's going to, going to be the surface result of something deeper. And that's the deeper realm, the deeper conscious realm that because you can't really put your finger on it in the material sense, because you can't show someone right in front of you what exactly it's doing, it's been disregarded by material sciences, which mm. yes and no, uh, there, there, there is a point there, but to the when you do the studies and when you, when you, when you feel it and you've seen the results over and over and, and half the world's been doing this for thousands of years to disregard it is just so ignorant and erring. And there's reasons we have, and it's, and it's obviously it's deeper than just the fact that it, it's not proven. Right. That's, that, that's what's so cool about this time. And, and um, it's a Tesla quote. That's my favorite quote. And I think it, it's something like this. It's something like, the day science begins to study the non-physical phenomena, it will gain more in one decade than the previous century or all the previous centuries of its existence, the non-physical phenomena. So when we can scientifically study and prove these concepts, mm-hmm. and that's, that quote's hanging up in the Thunderdome, it's one of my favorites, <laughs> it, what, then, then we're going to drastically elevate our conscious ability to create a lifestyle and live more harmonious than in a, a low vibrational state of more fear and ego and separatism and um, all of these things that restrict our growth. So the issues are internal and they always will be internal. No matter what our surface issues are, um, it's more about how we respond, how we deal with it. Mm. And I think that's the main thing that's missing. We're looking for that external source constantly because we're culturally conditioned to do so. Mm. So it's, it's so cool. It's like a, it's a reverse effect of how to approach life. We've always been taught to look at it externally and just the physical and not internally. It starts with you, you know, it's a mirror. So the external world Mm. is a reflection of our internal being. And I say that as individuals and as a whole, and you look at our world right now and you look at the manipulation of our perception and the triggering of our tendency tendencies that essentially amplify our attractions and draw us out of ourselves into this external influence. And that, is toxic to us. Now it's not, it's not, the thing is, it's not all bad. It's just the, um, the imbalance in that. That's really bad. There's not, there's zero bit internal. It's mostly external. And that's been the war that's won over by controlling entities, power, influence, manipulation, whatever it is you want to, however you want to put it. But to me, again, that's not the issue. The issue is always internal. It's our perception on that. If we can snap out of that and we can consciously grow enough to put ourselves grow, mm-hmm. it, it, that's the question of man. That's the test of man. One of them's love. One of them's fear. One of them's high vibration. One of them's low vibration. Which one's going to control our perception? Mm. How do you personally, um, you know, what are some methods like, you know, yoga, meditation, what are some methods you use to stay in that higher vibration and, and, yeah. and keep out? Cause it's so hard because it's easier said than done. You can talk about these concepts like we are right now and you can intellectualize them, but how do you personally like implement this stuff in your life and, and apply this stuff? Because, you know, every day the, the stress and pressure, especially during this time, what would you say to someone who's like watching this right now and wants to go onto this personal journey or, little things they can do every day to kind of see the light more than go down the fear tunnel. I guess you're yeah. Call it. yeah. Right. So that's a fantastic question. And you know, like what I do personally, it's like a lot of times people think that, you know, someone like me, like, you know, has it figured out? Like, right. like it's like so far from that. I'm tired right now. I'm a bit overworked, you know, I'm dealing with all these things, but 
just being conscious of it and opening your heart to it and putting the time aside and having the discipline and the integrity to, to put yourself first, to put the development of your mind, body, and spirit first, that to me is the most important step, which is Thunderdome Concepts. Number one thing we have to do is make that emphasis and teach people that from a young age. That alone, that awareness of it is the biggest key because many most people are just not engaged in that sense at all. They're just lacking that awareness, even in the way they work out. So fitness, st strength training and resistance training is very spiritual to me. And I can get into the, the physiology and psychology of why that is, but it opens up our energy pathways and it, and it really does some amazing things on the spiritual realm um, that can reflect in our emotional state and whatnot. Um, but essentially I, th I think that, you know, teaching these concepts and everyone setting the time aside and putting the material stuff second, <clears throat> the mere material gains second. I mean, look at the kids, like for example, college kids right now. I don't think that most college kids are in a place to grow. I think they're compromising the integrity of their own goals unconsciously because they're way overworked. They're eating terrible toxic food and they're super stressed. And it's all external influence based off of fear. I don't know if I'm going to do this. That I need to do that. You know what I mean? It, it, it's all external material consumption. So it pulls mm. them from themselves and they're able to retain less of what they're doing. They're able to align with themselves less because they're mm. catering to. That's what they're broadcasting out. That's if, what they're broadcasting. And it starts internally with their perception, which is this system is designed to pull us from. Mm. So that's, that would be my emphasis on that. And, and my, my, I, I use analogies for a lot of it. Sure. And I, I use the analogy of a basketball game for this is, is America is a basketball game, a basketball team, sorry. And we're playing a game and we, we don't stop and get off the court. We just keep playing. So people are tired, wow. they're broken down and our execution is poor because we haven't stopped, got off the court and talked about it. We haven't mm. slowed ourselves down. We are, our bodies are breaking down the mind. You can see obviously with the, there's never been more disorder in the mind and body. Mm. Um, a lifestyle has also never been easier. So it, it, there's a balance in that. But point being, you know, nobody wants to get off the court and discuss and absorb, observe themselves, observe the way their team's playing. They are literally on the court running around looking at what everyone else is doing and acting accordingly. And so if that's the case, how you play basketball for two days straight, what's going to happen? You're going to break down to the point where you realize, oh, wow, I can't, I can't do this anymore, which is usually what happens when people have their awakening. It's mm. a tra trauma or they get sick of who and being what they are. Um, or they realize how much it isn't working and how much they're compromising the integrity of their own goals, mm. which is done constantly, more than, more than the opposition. And so, and they resist the crisis because you know a crisis isn't bad. It's it's like the universe telling you, you got to change and wake up. And we've all I had that during this. I'm not saying I'm peaches and and sunshine either during this time either. It's been right. trying time for me. Um, but hey, without with that being said, I want to really dive into your farm as well because this is the second side of what you're doing. I think it's phenomenal. I truly I truly think so. Um, so let's dive into the food the side of food and nutrition and how would you explain your mission with global farms and maybe what is regenerative agriculture and what that embodies for those who don't know. So regenerative agriculture is, um, essentially using the indigenous species on site to regenerate and mimic the process of biology, to regenerate life and growth from what you already have instead of taking external sources. And so, which is, this is the producer mindset that we need to adapt and we need to pull back from the consumer mindset, which is that external influence and attachment, which is the, which is triggered by the, um, we'll say dark entities triggering our tendencies, amplifying what we're attracted to, to pull us from ourselves. Right? So this, this goes back to the development of our mind, body, spirit being our priority. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is how we make a world that's harmonious. And that's how we create growth is through ourselves and then reflecting in the external world. Now, in order to do that, we need healthy food. We need nutrients. You are what you eat. We know our gut is our second brain. All of these things, 
yet the way we food we eat and the food systems we depend on, I just wrote about this on my Instagram, are, are completely toxic. So in order to create a world that we want, we need to start with these basic things. So number one, the development of our mind, body, and spirit, and that includes what we eat. So number two, regenerative agriculture. Mm. And this to me is a very simple concept because we need to be plant dominant, which can be opinionated, but the way we, it's not, to me, meat's not the issue, but it's the way we eat meat and cultivate meat and the amount of people we have on earth and the way we're doing things right now, it's not a sustainable, it's very toxic what meat has become. It's not just a fresh deer from the middle of the woods for everyone, you know, and, and more often than not, it's hurting us more than it's helping us. And so what I've come up with, obviously, the Three-Eyed Tiger product is called the Thunderdome. And, and we can get into that later and why it's called that and what it is and what it's all about. But the main gist of it is one, development of our, we got to reconnect with ourselves, each other and the earth, right? That's done through fitness, farming and festivals. And it starts with the development of our mind, body and spirit, emphasizing that priority. And then regenerative agriculture is the way we can not only provide that for ourselves, we need that food, but also bring us together to unite, to create this from the mm. inside out. It's the process of unwinding culture from the source, from the bottom up, which to mm. me is soil where I started in 2013 with Leighton Morrison and Kingdom Aquaponics. So we started from the ground up. Our soil's toxic, we're toxic, and it is no mystery why this, there is no mystery why our culture is what it is and where, where it's become. We need mm. to consciously awaken and address it. And so that starts with a lot, a lot of it starts with food straight up. So the Thunderdome concept is a frequency over intensity model of producing regenerative agriculture. So frequency over intensity is flow method. We need, we need to stop trying to grow these huge farms that, that establish a monopoly and then contaminate vegetables in, in our foods in order to ship it and give it shelf life. We need to connect as individuals with what we're eating and connect mm. with nature. So as we t advance technologically, as we advance in this age, I think that technology is going to point us right back to ourselves and we're going to have to get back to our roots. So we're going to have to, technology is a beautiful thing, right? Mm. Which many will disagree with. Technology is the issue. Technology is not the issue. It's the way we respond. It's us. And so as we advance technologically and as science catches up to spirituality, it's going to point us back to nature and we're going to re think about how smart nature is and how smart we are. That's the thing. We're smart. We think we're smarter than nature right now. Uh -uh. Nature is complex and it's incredible. It's, you know, some would call uh, some people would consider it, you know, a gift of God and, or whatever you want to talk, but it's the complexity and the way it's all intertwined is beyond our comprehension at this point, though we think we have it figured out. And so just establishing a reconnecting with ourselves, each other and the earth through food, through conscious mm. development is how we unwind this culture from the inside out. And I, the Thunderdome is the product to do that. It's a way to bring that to unconscious America in a way that's understandable, relatable, and enjoyable through fitness, farming, and festivals. And that's what we can relate to. We enjoy music, we enjoy the fitness, we enjoy that, mm. so that's our attraction. So the Thunderdome ideally <laughs> would be put up all over the place and it's a sustainable, Zero net energy because it's a producer mindset over a consumer mindset. So how can we take the minimal amount of structure, um, you know, appliances, whatever it is, the minimal amount we need to produce the most, and how can we replicate that as frequently as possible, mm -hmm. and essentially provide the platform to execute number one and two, mind, body, and spirit, regenerative agriculture, connect people with food. So I would like to, in the in the most minimalistic way provide this platform and opportunity to people for people to have access to an, uh, a healthier, happier and holier lifestyle. Mm. Uh, and, and the more we can put our energy towards this, the better off our external world is going to be and our surface issues. That's the thing right now. The big thing is everybody's on the surface issues and, and most people that are really into it are, are, are stuck on the surface issues that relate to them personally, which is under, understandable, but sure. what they're missing is the source, the source of all of it, and how that affects all of our sur surface issues. And that if we could reground ourselves and reconnect ourselves and, and stop with this consumer crap and, and really become more mm -hmm. conscious about our lifestyle and the way we're living, well, we'll stop digging these holes for ourselves. And you would see a lot of the, the, all the surface issues be affected from the source. Mm.
You know, I it's so cool. I think for me, simplifying all of what you just said is like if you practice all these stuff and apply to your life, what's the byproduct, man? You will have a passion and, and drive and enthusiasm for life, which frankly, I'm listen, I'm twenty one, I'm still in college, I'm in that age group where, you know, I'm not I don't know at all, but I do know that I see the world and I see a lot of people living unfulfilling on purposeful lives that it needs to change because like you said, the direction we're going, it's, it's an old paradigm of thinking and we're going to crash and burn if we keep going like we are. Old paradigm and, of thinking that we're consciously right now awakening. And that is us like people all over the place, all over yeah. the world expressing these concepts. And the, the thing is it's, it's a natural shift. So this is in the, the um, astrology. This is in the cosmic mm-hmm. alignment that we are consciously awakening right now and crawling out of a low vibrational state into a higher vibrational state, a state of power and greed into a state of love and compassion and understanding. Mm -hmm. And so our generation is really at the transition point of that. And the generation before us has a lot harder time understanding that. And that is because the system up until now has really been an attempt to suppress our consciousness by creating a system that produces unconscious, external, materialistic, egotistical, culturally consumed, human beings that are only able to perceive the surface of the world, which mm-hmm. then reflects in all of our surface issues and the toxicity that our cultures become. Unconscious. So, unconscious. It all comes down to ourselves, what's internal, and our ability to consciously control the world. Are we going to produce the world or are we going to be a product of the world? Fear is external. Love is internal. Which mm-hmm. one are we going to be? And it's up to people like us. I call this time, I drew a diagram about it. I wish I could show you it right now. It's really cool. It's it's funny, it, it, you know, it's a, a meditation diagram with the balance of the nadis and the love and the fear and where culture has been designed to take our perception and where our external worlds um, are, our, our results and the way we live are produced by that external influence. Mm. And so until we can make that more internal, until we can be more vibrant and um, live in a higher vibration, we're still going to struggle with all these issues. That, the stuff that people are trying to fix material-wise is not going to change. It starts inside and it's got to start deeper from the source. Well, Jimmy, I want to, time to run up. I want to thank you so much for coming on. I wish we had more time, but how can people contact you and, and maybe check out your farm and, and start to eat healthier, get a wholesome approach to their lives and start to feel this, this passion that you have and, and so forth. Right. So um, I'm just hoping I'll be able to get the message out a little more and uh, express, obviously I'm working day to day. So, you know, my time is, somewhat limited i'm trying to free myself up to be able to do that but um they can reach me at my instagram which is three eyed tiger th- uh, three underscore eyed underscore tiger my email is the three eyed tiger with the number three in it the, the number three eyed tiger at gmail.com and um i will have a website somewhat soon the other thing is i'm at where copal farms in forestdale massachusetts 40 country mm-hmm. farm road we got a farm stand we have really healthy organic um ayurvedic based vegetables Mm-hmm. and fruits so if anyone wants to reach out to there i'm happy to happy to discuss with really any anyone that um is along this path and meryl i want to thank you I'm, I'm so happy for you i'm psyched to hear that you're this this into this concept and um that you're building your life around it because i don't think actually sounds arrogant but i know that nothing's more important so people are going to chase material things this is how we're fixing that this is how we're fixing that uh-uh the process starts with the non-physical. It starts deeper. It starts at the source. Mm. We need to become more conscious beings. We need to raise our vibration, and that will reflect externally. Mm. I love it, man. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be in touch.